Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the factors affecting the rate of transport. Now, what I've got here are, are some things that can affect the rate of transport. What you need to do is go back to some of the other videos and look at the different types of transport and try and apply these to the one that you are looking at and also the context of the exam question. But I can give you a bit of, bit of help to kind of get through this. So, first off, surface area. If we was to look at something like simple diffusion, the bigger the surface, this could be the surface of the cell. So the bigger the surface, the faster the rate of diffusion will occur. But that only applies really to, to molecules that are non-polar, molecules that can move straight through the bilayer all by itself. Um, diffusion distance, membranes are very, very, um, thin and the thinner it is the faster the diffusion will occur or the larger the distance is the slower it will occur and this can apply to the membrane of a cell or even a structure like one of the alveoli in the lungs if the alveoli become damaged they can become scarred they, be they can become thickened and therefore the distance gets larger and the rate of diffusion slows down concentration difference. So if there is a very similar concentration on both sides, the speed at which diffusion occurs is much slower. If there's a very big difference, so it's very, very high on one side, very, very low on the other, then diffusion can occur much faster. However, active transport could occur slower because there's a bigger force to try and drive these molecules from where there's very little to where there's a lot. So you can see sometimes it can speed things up and also sometimes it could actually slow things down. Same kind of thing with temperature. So temperature, the warmer it is, the faster molecules will move. So in something like diffusion, generally as temperature increases, the rate of diffusion also increases. However, this can become a bit of a problem because if you think about temperature, as it gets higher and higher, it can actually begin to damage membrane components. So what you might find is that as temperature increases, the speed of diffusion increases, and it can get to a point where the membrane begins to get damaged to the point where molecules are moving very, very quickly and eventually become the same on both sides. The temperature can actually damage things, but in kind of normal temperatures, the, the rule is the higher it is, the faster diffusion will occur. One quite important one to think about is the number of channel proteins. So the more channels or the more carriers you've got, the faster you can get facilitated diffusion. Now, obviously, this can only apply to some of the type of transport, not all type of transport use carrier proteins. Similarly, how available ATP is. If there's lots of ATP available, active transport can happen very quickly. If ATP becomes a limiting factor, so it's not being produced quickly enough, active transport is slowed down. So you can kind of see where I'm going at there. A lot of the time there are rules, but it depends on which type of transport you're thinking about. So what I'd like to do is take each of these points, take each of the types of transport and try and work your way through it and think, in what conditions would these have an effect? Now, to help you with that, I'm going to go through two examples. So these are taken from exam papers. They're all I've done. I've looked at, sorry, I've looked at uh, the graph that comes with it. So what you've got here is a graph and along the bottom you've got concentration and up to the side you've got the rate of uptake. So how quick then the speed that the molecule is going into the cell. Now if you look at the green line, first of all, the simple diffusion, that's the easiest one to think about. As the concentration increases, the rate of uptake increases. In simple terms, the more you've got, the faster it will go in. And this will pretty much happen in a nice straight line like you've got there. Okay, so just keep going up and up and up. Now that only applies to a non-polar molecule. 
because simple diffusion requires non-polar molecules. But as a general rule, the surface area of the cell is very, very big. So as the concentration goes up, the speed at which it goes in will also go up. Facilitated diffusion, as you can see, is the purple line. It's a little bit different. So I'll try and talk you through why, and then I'll give you some kind of example to help you. So with facilitated, it does increase at the beginning, the kind of the first bit of the graph, because the concentration increases, the rate increases. You increase it a little bit more, the concentration, and the rate increases again. But very quickly, it begins to level off. And even if I increase the concentration to a very, very high concentration, the rate stays the same. The speed at which it's moving into that cell stays the same. So try and think of it in this way. At the start, there are lots and lots of channels and there's only a low concentration of molecules. So the molecules can go through the channels quite easily. And that's why the rate will increase. If I increase the concentration, the rate will increase again. However, if I keep increasing the concentration, all the channels start getting used. And if I increase the concentration even more, those molecules are now having to wait to get through the channel. So in a way, the rate will increase and increase and increase, and eventually it gets to a point where it can't go any faster because the molecules are queuing up. Now, a bit of a, a daft example, um, but it might make sense, is if you think about a football stadium as being a little bit like a cell, the turnstiles, the gates that you get into the stadium are a bit like the channels. Now, if there's a very low concentration of people, there's not very many people outside, they can go into the channels quite easily. And if I have a few more people, they can use different channels around the stadium. So the rate will increase. But if I have a massive crowd outside, a massive concentration, they can't get through the turnstiles very quickly. They can't get through the channels very quickly. And the result is they have to queue up. They are going through the turnstile as fast as they possibly can, but there is still a queue. And because they're going through as fast as they can, the rate has leveled off. So in this case here, the number of channels does limit the speed at which facilitated diffusion can occur. And therefore, it does limit the rate of uptake. Another example is from a table. So this table is taken from an exam paper. I've taken the question away just so we can focus on the important bits. I've picked this one purposely because it, it takes a little bit more thinking about. So what you have in the top row is the oxygen concentration. And we've got 0, 4, 11, 20 units. And along the bottom, we've got the rate of uptake of potassium ions. And again, 7, 27, 92 and 100 units. So as you can see, as the concentration of oxygen increases, the rate of uptake of potassium ions also increases. Right. We're now going to try and think, where does this oxygen kind of come into things? So oxygen is required to make ATP. ATP is used by active transport. So just by thinking in that way, I've already made a link to the right type of transport. It's active transport. So the only thing to try and think about now is the very first bit. Active transport can explain four units of oxygen, 11 units of oxygen. The more I've got, the faster the rate of potassium uptake. But the one that's a bit hard is the first one. So when there is no oxygen, some potassium ions still get taken up. Well, how can that occur in active transport? Quite simply, really, if you think about it, all I'm saying is this cell has got no oxygen now. I'm not saying the cell didn't have any oxygen 10 minutes ago. So it could have been making ATP 10 minutes ago. And as a result, it will have ATP floating around inside the cell. When the oxygen is taken away, it can still perform active transport, not for very long, but it can still do it. So the seven units of potassium ions could be caused by the cell having, in a way, old ATP or residual ATP. Another thing to explain, the uh, 
the first value is it could be by diffusion. So it could just be, if there's no oxygen there, the potassium ions are still moving into the cell and therefore it must be by diffusion. So I know that's a bit of a unsure, I'm a bit unsure about that one, but I can answer the question. I can say categorically, a active transport is occurring in four, 11 and 20 units of oxygen because the rate of uptake increases. I can say that the first one can be explained, the zero can be explained by either residual ATP or by diffusion. And by doing that, I still answer the question. So I can still justify the type of transport. So what you need to do now really is look at different types of transport and try and think which of the factors would increase or decrease the rate of uptake. And then when you're going through exam paper questions, try and think, how could you apply that to the question? It's all about practice. So it's not something you're going to learn straight away. It's not something you can learn as a fact. It's something you have to apply. So it takes a bit of practice, but it's well worth doing.